Hello and welcome to Warblog. Today we're looking at the uh, Syrian army's southern offensive south through um, eastern Aleppo. It took me a while to figure this out, um, but this is the Jera Air Base just sort of under there. And so the last sort of game I think maybe I even videoed was the offensive here but it sort of threw me a bit because that was sort of sectioned like that or something um, and, and didn't see these sort of these bits of water that makes it look like a um, you know a sort of a bottleneck so to speak and a natural defensive line and it wasn't until I got pretty much to the end of the map when I suddenly put this little place on I thought hang on I've seen that before um, What's happened there? I've got one of those computer things that just doesn't uh, go around in circles. So anyway, um, I have to refresh the screen or something. There we go. Um, yeah, so I might as well just jump into play mode. Um, and it does answer the sort of question of where this road leads. Well, it leads down here to um, what's it called? Um, Muscana, I assume, is an ISIS stronghold. Um, so I've included it as an objective, but it's not an objective. These are the objectives. So basically, the uh, in this sort of initiative, the, this Syrian Arab army advanced from there down to there. Um, let me even use my magical tool to do that. So they start off here, obviously, and they finish up. taking out all of this so they don't really advance down to here this is just for you to sort of you know if you aren't going that far I thought putting more objectives here and here uh, but not a lot of point really um, interesting sort of feature is this because now it's put in there as a stream as opposed to a river uh, meaning that you can cross it but by crossing it you, you your movement is all finished um, as opposed to a river which is uncrossable but it's a, it looks like a shipping canal and, and it sort of has a big um, what looks like an artificial mouth that stems out about that far so it actually goes out like that and so it actually looks as though it's sort of a um, you know fairly significant shipping canal it looks like there's a bridge up here but it's not, not that relevant um, so, I have absolutely no idea what needs to be done. I think it's a, one of these things where the um, it's pretty obvious that the Syrian army are going to just walk over what we've what what you know the the, the ISIS positions. So it, it's not challenging in that sense, but it, it's a game that, that has its um, in, inherent sort of interest. As a pl in 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 its sort of playability, you know exactly how, how do you do it and where do you do it and etc etc. Um, it's all sort of fairly generic, apart from that they advertise it as sort of being driven by the Syrian Tiger Forces, which is sort of the equivalent of their sort of pseudo sort of special forces. I've given them two. There really should only be one battalion, but I've sort of split them up into two. Um, and, and again, it's sort of billed as you know, the tight Syrian Tiger Forces, but you know, there's an awful lot of other people there. I don't really know what the manpower levels are on, on each side, so I'll just put it as, as that is. Um, the, the ISIS have a little bit of scope for play because they can move these units. Um, there's some air defense down there, but they can move these units up, these motorized units, and there's a couple of motorized companies there, and they could start moving all of those up. Um, if they want to sort of, you, you know, actually defend anything in earnest, most of the ISIS units start off in um, entrenched, um, but there aren't any real sort of defensive features um, around. Um, you know, there's no hills, some hills as they fall back here, but they they pretty much lost the Jura Air Base, which was advertised as sort of or build as you know their last strategic strong point. 
Um, I think the rest is just sort of clearing up villages, really. So I don't think it's really, you, you know, the Eastern Front or anything like that. Um, but I don't know at all what I want to do. Um, I mean, now we've got some motorised and some infantry, but there is basically nothing to some irregulars blocking the way. Um, Mechanised and infantry. So it's an odd one, really, because you play these things in isolation. Um, the reason I'm saying that is because I would be inclined to get a, a hold on that. Let's just refresh the page so I can start that again. A hold on there with some units. And then sort of create a line like that and sweep across that way. But of course, I'm not sure that that makes a huge amount of sense um, because there's it doesn't really factor in the ISIS push this way, like that, which would be a sort of more of a flank. So, but I'm just going to actually use this drawing tool to sort of think aloud as to sort of what I might want to do because I think naturally the thing to do is to put things into sort of groups um, I mean this little section here it looks like it's on its own and it would be I am still inclined to somehow drive this way with some kind of defensive line like that um, because these are the there's one, two, three, four, so there's one, two, three, four, and this objective sort of is on its own. And with, with again, with these ones, you can either sort of settle for a um, for a static line, which is sort of tempting um, because they're not objectives, and then to use these units from the airbase to sort of come basically straight down here and then straight over here, holding this without any advance in the initial stages. So I think that's going to be my game plan. Now I like this game plan, it's suddenly sort of crystallised in my mind a little. Uh, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to be holding that. Oh, let's go into super duper draw mode. I'm going to be holding that. So there's not going to be any movement there. Um, I'm going to hold that, so there's going to be no movement there, but I'm going, to, I'm going to basically move south with these units, which include Tiger Forces, and I'm going to move this into there to essentially take that as a front. So basically, this will be my front line afterwards. So my initiative, so to speak, will modify things so that they, well, can't erase that, I do have, I'm on the verge of putting the eraser feature in, so it would go from there to there. So I'll be just taking these two little chunks, and, and, and the reason I'm quite happy with that, um, I'm probably not going to play it, but um, the reason I would do that is because I think that's a sensible sort of strategic move in the sense that what I'm quite likely to do and what frustrates me in when I watch these sort of playthroughs is that everything moves forward. And I've said this time and time again, but I haven't said it for a while. It's just like watching like, five year olds play football. Everyone chases the ball. So everyone just sort of steams south and hits whatever they can. And, and I see that so often in games. And it's sort of like, well, you know, you might as well play. I mean, you know, it's all a bit like Sudoku anyway, but it's sort of, I don't know, it's nicer when, you know, war doesn't happen like that. They, they choose a particular strategic, you know, initiative or something, and then they sit back and say, well, how did that work? What can we now do? And, and you know, I mean, and, and when you sort of play it like that, and you're sort of applying pseudo-maturity to it all, it does mean that... Um, How do you switch these things off? It does, does mean that um, 
that you can do the same with sort of ISIS. So, so ISIS could sort of actually give up that and retreat in the sense that they know that there's an impending advance coming on. They could almost retreat from here, but they could almost as well respond with, with sort of, you know, fallback defensive lines like that, and then, you, 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 you know, um, I've got to sort of rush out, it's my alarm's for so a, a bit sort of lopsided on my video, I just wanted to do this before I have to shoot, shoot out, but um, I think it's an interesting scenario, and, and, you know, I just love the sort of, the challenge of, of trying to think about it and, and, and build more into what's what, and this drawing tool is really making it quite quite interesting really because you can sort of I mean it's just a bunch of lines I've seen this done before and, and it's just a bunch of lines it doesn't mean anything but it looks really clever um, but the thing is I think it's that sort of the planning is what I think makes a strategic game it's sort of like you know actually considering what to do and making those decisions and the rest of it is sort of the, the movement the actually doing of it all is, um, is is something else and I think you know, I might say something else. It's 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 a more me mechanical, rote sort of process that you can probably figure out in advance. But um, it's that's what sort of makes strategic games, in my opinion, um, to some extent. It's that thinking and then determining and carrying out a course of action, and you don't see that a lot in a lot of playthroughs on YouTube um, I mean this is obviously a new tool for me but it, it's sort of just visualizing what I've been thinking um, you, you know a lot of these playthroughs they just go straight into it they open it up and they just move a lot of counters around which is fine I do that myself but you, you know more so uh, with, with less thinking but I think what I'm getting to to some extent are these real-time action real-time strategy games they're called rts real-time strategy and and the, the internet and the whole of the universe is just stuffed full of them if you look google for anything like strategy games it's just you know the best modern strategy game blah 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 rts oh it's a real-time strategy it's not real time it's not strategy it's just it's just that you know what it's almost um there's a so it's hand-eye coordination type game. You, you know, you, you make a few. I mean, some of them. I was watching somewhere. Uh, there's this new generation of Gettysburg games, um, the American Civil War, down to the, you know every little musket fires a different musket plume, and there are all these little soldiers fighting around. But what they all that happens is you sort of say, okay, I'm going to do this and this. And you press the go button and it just does it. And you're sitting there watching it. If I want to watch a film about Gettysburg, I'll, I'll watch. That film called was it Glory? It's quite good, um, but you, you know they're not actually. You're not thinking. It's, there's no there's no element of chess in there. I mean the worst. And some of them, one that I really wanted to play, um, I think it's called Red Dragon, it land air land battle, uh, Red Dragon or something. And I was nearly going to buy it because it's quite cheap. And I don't have any of these games. None, none at all. The only thing I've ever bought about four or five years ago was you know Europa Universalis I played that quite a few times but you know it's just one of these things that just takes up to too much time so I only play it about four or five times but you know when you consider one time takes like about three or four days non-stop it's quite intense but um you know the, the, the Red Dragon airland battle the reason the reason I didn't I put it in my cart. The reason I didn't buy it is because there's the apparently there's no pause in it. You can't pause and start thinking. Any game that deprives you of the ability to think in anything, you know, obviously in the real real battles you have to think in real time. But you know, so I'm not denying that. But the, the games, the whole idea is that you can do this. This is what strategy and thinking is all about. Having even if you just do it mentally. Um, and the reason people can do this before is because they didn't have the tool sets to do it. You can't do this with a, you know, a tabletop hex encounter uh, game unless you, you know, get a Xerox and you photocopy end of the map and you can do that sort of stuff. But anyway, I've had a little blast. Um, I've got to go. Twelve seconds left. I've made lots of little squiggly things with my awesome tool, 
and um, I hope you enjoyed that, and I look forward to making more games and seeing, speaking to you later. Bye.